for what you asked before, I didn't want to get too much into it, but the, the nefesh and the, the ruach and the neshama, they go up right away to Shemaim. The nefesh stays next to the kever for the whole year. The nefesh stays down here. The thing is that the nefesh gets... Huh? That's kind of hard to explain, but there's, there's different layers of the neshama. Not layers, I would say there's different levels of the neshama. The neshama has five levels. The highest level is called Yechida, which is very, very holy. It doesn't, we don't have anything to, we don't even get this level in our life. Only when, when you get back to where we came from, the, the Yechida is there. A lower level from that is Chaya, which is too holy, doesn't even penetrate the body. It's like, you know, around your body, like, you know, the non-Jews, they call it Aura. Huh? This is a kind of Makif around your body. And then the Neshama has three lower levels, which is the Neshama, Ruach, and Nefesh. The Neshama is a piece of Hashem, Chelek Elokah. It's a little piece from Hashem that is still, that is given to you. Now, a small percentage of the Neshama is in your body, the rest of the Neshama is in Shemaim. So maybe a little piece, I don't know, a percent or two is in the body, and, it's, and the rest is in Shemaim. And Arizal says that Mishkan Neshama is here in our head, that's where we put the, that fill in. But then you have the Ruach. Ruach is what enlivens the body. And the Nefesh is the lowest level of the Neshama, which is the lowest level of the godly part in you. Now, here already it comes, you have a Nefesh Elokit, a Nefesh Bemit, a godly Nefesh, and an animal Nefesh. But there's different levels of the, ne of the Neshama. The way it works is the Neshama itself gets dressed like this. You know, you take a, a cup and you put another cup in it, then you put another cup in it. So the Neshama gets dressed in the Ruach, and the Neshama in the Ruach gets dressed in the Nefesh. The Nefesh is the most lowest level of the Neshama that it kind of can interact with the body. The Neshama is way, you know, way beyond the, the, the body. That's why you asked before, how can I not remember? The Neshama, you know, gets dressed in so many Halamot Ve'Nehesterim that it doesn't, doesn't really relate so much to the world. It needs the Nefesh... You know what, the nefesh, I always say, it's like, you know, you have these big uh, tractors and then you see a person sitting in it and he's like with the sticks moving it to the sides and up and down. That's the nefesh, it moves your body. The nefesh has kochot nefesh. The kochot nefesh are corresponding to the 248 positive mitzvot. We have 248 positive mitzvot corresponding to 248 limbs, corresponding to 248 kochot nefesh. So you have the power of vision, this is one power of the nefesh, corresponding to one mitzvah. There's each mitzvah corresponds to one koach of the nefesh. Imagine you have 48 powers in your, in your nefesh. The soul is way beyond above it to even deal with the body. So the nefesh is like the glove that you like put your hand in the glove and you move your hands, then the glove moves. So the neshama gets dressed in the ruach, into the nefesh, and the nefesh behaves in this, in this world. The memory, neither one. The memory is in the, what's called the levush, the levush of machshava. And the levush, all the neshama, and ruach, and nefesh, they get dressed in the levushim. That's what's holding the memory. Okay. But that's already in a more, you know, the levushim stay with, with the nefesh. Mm -hmm. So everything that's in your memory is, on, is not, it's not programmed on the neshama. It's more on the, on the levushim, the garments of machshava. Yeah, and a Shema has, Shema is such an intellect being, it doesn't need, if you remove the Neshama from the body, it doesn't need what we need. The Neshama sees everything. Yeah, the Neshama, when the Neshama leaves the world, it's, it's so intelligent, it sees everything. How I saw the entire universe, sees nothing compared to what the Neshama tastes. The Neshama knows everything. If, when the Neshama looks down to this world, it looks like, you know, this old machine, how we would look now at, you know, how you... Uh, somebody showed me not too long ago a toy that we had when we were kids. Like, it looked like a dinosaur. Today, the, the, to the kids, they have all these electronic games. When we were kids, the toys were like big and bulky. And, uh, so, when you look at that, it looks to you like, oh, look how, you know, you know how we used the, the phones, the cell phones, 10 years ago with, with these big, big things. Now your phone is like little, you, you know, what you can do with the phone today is unbelievable. 
So, huh? Exactly. Everything. Everything. That's how you see technology allows us to understand the level of intelligence that is beyond us. It says, "Bechal and Mashiach will come." The technology we're going to have is not going to be normal. We're we're yeah, it seems like we're getting stupider. But the thing is, when the neshama looks down, this world looks very primitive, very like old-fashioned. The neshama sees everything. It's not limited. It sees from one side of the world to the other side. It sees everything, understands everything. No, the thing is that when a person does an avera, he basically creates a blemish that needs to be removed by tshuva. When a person didn't do a mitzvah aseh, a positive mitzvah, he didn't make any blemish. He just didn't bring down to this world this or eloki, this godly light, by this mitzvah. So this is the difference between doing tshuva for a negative, for a mitzvah lot aseh, because the Gemara explains it in a very simple way, that when a person didn't do a mitzvah to say, he has to do tshuva, but when a person did, uh, uh, transgressed a mitzvah lo he has to do tshuva, he has to wipe off the, this blemish by doing tshuva and yisurim and, and, and fasting. When a person didn't do a mitzvah, a, a mitzvah lo he just didn't create this blemish. He just refrained, a sur mira. But mitzvah taseh, there's an action that happens. When I do a mitzvah taseh, basically what I do is I bring down this godly light into this world. And if I didn't do it, I missed it. I lost my opportunity. If I have a mitzvah taseh to say kriyat shema twice a day, I didn't say kriyat shema in, in Arvit, I lost the opportunity to bring this godly light into this world. I had a mitzvah taseh to, to say birkat amazon, I did not say it. I didn't create a blemish on my neshama. I just didn't bring this godly light this, that I was supposed to do it. Because Hashem gave you a, a mission in this world. He told you, you have to say X amount of times Kriyat You have to say X amount of times Birkat Amazon. And you have to do things. If you don't do it, it's almost like, you know, you go to work and you just didn't do what your boss told you. So, it's not that you didn't, that you damaged the goods. You just didn't, you weren't productive. So the mitzvot aseh corresponds to the, the positive act of bringing godly light to the world. Since this act brings this godly light to the world, this hashpa'ah to the world, then this is, this is the, the, the force that gives your nefesh koach. That's why the 248 uh, mitzvot aseh correspond to the kochot nefesh, because you're able to, to do something. The, the mitzvot lot aseh, they don't correspond to the nefesh necessarily. They, 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 this is just refraining from doing bad. Sumira. It's just saving yourself from getting your nefesh all dirty and your neshama dirty. That later on you have to do tshuva for that. Uh, it corresponds to your entire... Nefesh, the Ruach, and Neshama. It's not that you're doing mitzvot aseh for the Ruach. The mitzvot aseh is you're doing it, it, it affects the, the, the whole system. It's not that the Neshama and the Nefesh are like separate from each other and you're like, I'll do this mitzvah for the Neshama and this mitzvah for the Nefesh. Why do we have to have three separate, five separate? Why? Does everybody have a Nefesh, Ruach, and Neshama? Yeah. No, they live with it. No. No, you have to, you have to climb to get the level of work. A person can be in a very low level and he only, he only has the level of nefesh. You have to climb to get to the level of nefesh and climb to get to the level of neshama.